few days ago we had the front grassland area cut for hay um, and they produce 16 bales good quality hay mixed with herbs and that kind of stuff um, but there was bits left over where the machine that was baling couldn't quite reach so I went and got it and the plan for this is to get it chopped up with my mower and then we can start adding it to our, either our compost making system or use it as a mulch on the beds because you can probably figure out for yourself we're in for another hot day so mulching our vegetable patches is a good thing to do to retain the moisture and keep things cooler so we'll crack on with this and then join me when I've finished it and we start talking about what can go into your compost and what to avoid. Okay, so I've run the mower over that heap. It was, um, I basically, when I collected it, I had three trailer loads um, of it and running the mower over it quickly has reduced it down in size to one trailer load. Okay, there's a bit still on the ground, but even if I raked up every last piece of this, um, it wouldn't make that any any bigger relatively speaking and the principle is is basically what we're looking to do is to chop down anything that we want to add to our compost heaps to increase the surface area but obviously in this case not the volume now why do we want to do that okay if you're watching this video it's because you well i'm guessing it's because you're you're trying to find out what goes in your compost and there's so much information out there as to what can go in and what can't and why etc etc and really it creates so much confusion now regular viewers are going to know that I'm yeah obsessed with compost but I need to be really here because I don't want to be buying in any more than I need to and I, if I've got the materials to make my own then that is the ideal situation to be in. Now why am I watering this? Well compost needs four things. Water as we can see here, oxygen and then it needs brown materials and what we call green materials and this is the main reason for this video because it seems that a lot of confusion comes about when people aren't sure whether they can put certain things into their compost making process. So let's hope that by the end of this video, you're going to know what you can and what you can't put in. Now, the way I make mine is I'm always looking around the materials to go in but one of the problems with making compost is you never have enough of the right materials unless you're planning ahead so in the case of the green and brown materials we're looking at things let's look at the basics first of all the obvious stuff in the garden are uh, grass cuttings hedge clippings that kind of thing and then the browns looking at things like fallen leaves but here's the problem grass grows in the summer leaves fall in the winter but you still need a steady supply so how do we go about getting those steady supplies okay well let's start looking at that. I'll just finish giving this a bit of a bit of a drink what I tend to do is every time I add a layer of something certainly browns I'll always give it some water it helps the decomposition of the materials inside and the bacteria like all life forms need a bit of water okay that's there now that's good okay now let's look at the brown materials first the obvious one is the one from the beginning of the, the video where i've been chopping up the hay that i collected from the um the front area of the, of the property where we had it cut recently so we're just going to put that on there like that 
but I obviously I want to spread it out because I just want to make sure that we get good coverings of all areas. We don't want a great big heap of one particular thing. We want it as le level as we can get it. So here we go. That's in. See, always you have it. If you can get hold of a pitchfork, it's so much easier. Now, okay, this is a big scale, bigger than most people, but you can use any container you wish. The principles are exactly the same. Um, there's these plastic containers you can get. You can make a smaller version of this using just a couple of pallets. Some people just pile it up in a heap. So, you know, this is how I do it because I'm just going to give that a bit more water because it's quite dry. So there's loads of different containers that you can use if you choose to use a container. Okay, so that's my source of summer brown materials. I've got some others to use in a second, but we'll just pop that on, get a bit of water on there, like so. Now, green materials, so what do we have? Well, there's a number of options. So when you're gardening, you're going to be creating your own waste, be, it, be that prunings or, like I said already, grass cuttings, weeding. Now, some people think that you can't put weeds on your compost heap. Well, here you go. This is bindweed. Some people call it morning glory. <laughs> I don't see anything glorious about that. And this has come out of the a number of vegetable patches from our no-dig garden. And contained within that is also some of the materials that were contained in the bed. So there's a there's some elements here of the sawdust. You see that we've got grass here. These are all green materials. People seem to think that you can't put weeds on the compost because it's gonna it's not gonna kill it. Well it's a weed really, it's a plant. So there's no reason why you can't. Now, I did do a video recently about pruning the squash plants. And here we go. We've got the leaves, or some of the leaves, from that particular job. So again, spread them out. You could cut them down a bit small if you wanted to, but the courgette leaves are fairly hollow. They're not going to take long to, to, to decompose. Now, when I did that video about um, pruning the squashes it was because we were looking not only to attract the bees um, to the plants to pollinate but also to to reduce the risks of um, powdery mildew now if you look at the idea of powdery mildew and things like um, blight on potatoes or on um, tomatoes is a very good example many people say some say that you can't put that onto your compost heap. Well, the spores of blight and or powdery mildew only live on a living plant. And so therefore, once that plant goes onto your compost, it will die and so do the spores. So you can put those things onto your compost without risk or fear of it contaminating if you want the heat so again now i'm putting another layer of brown materials on another misconception or that's probably not the right phrase to be fair um, People get hung up, that's probably a better way of putting that, on what is the exact mixture. Well, really, 
don't beat yourself up over it just aim for 50 50 and you won't go far wrong now again because that hay is quite quite dry I'm giving it another drink of water not too much you don't want to overwater your compost heaps because if you do it turns into a slimy mush and that is not what we want because that will compact down and it won't allow the oxygen that's needed to get in there and break it down further okay so there we go so i will put in some green materials from our garden works be it weeds or prunings and now here's some other materials that we can use now the first one I've got here all gardeners are going to have this so it's a seed tray of compost and basically these are all plants that haven't um, germinated for whatever reason or it could be that you threw the compost in and never plant anything in there all kinds of things but you can use the compost from your um, bedding plants that you've got hanging up Let's pop that over there I will don't worry I will collect it um, bedding plants bags of spent compost all kinds of things a lot of people are talking about how their um, seeds aren't germinating they're blaming their compost that they bought because they're convinced that it should have been peat free but quite often is the case that the seeds are planted and then suddenly you didn't realize that mr slug or snail has walked across the top of your seeds and taken off the shoot just as it's coming through i shouldn't have done that should i I've got muck all over my face now. I'm giving myself a wipe. Okay. See, look, this is another unedited video. <laughs> okay, now the next thing we're looking at as a green material, class them as kitchen scraps, kitchen waste. And so let's tip this bucket out. Now, this is the remains if you like or the leaves of some kohlrabis that we harvested again you can break these up if you want to not an exact thing so yeah kohlrabis what else we got in there bit of weeding that the lady of house has been doing over the weekend what a good person she's become now we've got some stalks here of kohlrabis they look a bit tough but they're they're small enough that's okay um, and there's a root to a kohlrabi but if you wanted to again you can cut them up a bit more now there you go kitchen waste that's some of it i've got some more in there but i just want to show you another alternative to a brown material that you can add and that is cardboard so, the cardboard you're looking for, we'll start first of all with this. Okay, there's writing on this cardboard, but the thing about that is the ink is water-based. So, you're not going to have any problems. Years ago, inks were solvent-based, but now... They're not, they're water-based. So, like I say, adding cardboard to your mix is a, is a good thing to do. It will break down. It takes a little bit longer. But what you want to avoid is don't add cardboard that is shiny. Shiny to the touch or to the look. It's got to be flat, got to be matte. Because the shiny stuff is laced with various solvents. The other thing you want to bear in mind... As when you're making your no-dig beds, if you're using cardboard as the base, you want to make sure that you remove all the packaging tape um, and labels because the packaging tape has solvents in it. 
do this one quickly. And you know, that's in the form of the glues. Obviously, the tape is plastic. Same with the labels. The labels are going to be waterproof. Obviously, if they've come as a delivery, um, they need to be durable in the weather conditions. So all that kind of stuff, avoid. Now, this is my biggest, well, I don't know, oh, well, I do know the word, but I'm probably not a good idea to use it. But one of my biggest frustrations is that people are now being told that to reduce um, waste and causing pollution in our environment, a lot of governments, I know it's happening quite a bit in the UK, I don't know about America or any other country, um, that compostable food containers is the way forward. And is it, is the question. Now, if, you, if you're in a country where this is becoming um, quite the thing, I'd love to hear where the country is. Because the, the trouble with it is, yeah, okay, your, your coffee cup might be um, compostable but if that was a jar of coffee or a cup of coffee how does it stop the water coming out or the liquid coming out of the cup itself it's so hot today um, it's treated with a chemical it's the same with your food packaging if you're in your pizza box how do you stop the grease coming out well it's it's treated with a chemical to stop it leaking basically and yeah okay that container may um, compost down these are coffee grounds chucking those on good form of nitrogen so as that coffee cup decomposes what it does is it leaves the chemicals that it was treated with in the soil and there's over five billion different chemical compounds used in these um, containers that Oh, that doesn't look very nice, does it? So this is our container from the kitchen. Um, yeah, so these food containers, we've got all these chemicals in. They rot down, but unfortunately, the chemicals stay in the ground. And they're called forever chemicals. But they're no good. You don't want to be putting those things in. Right, so we've got food scraps in there. We've got cardboard in there that we know has got water-based um, water inks. Now for another layer of browns because we want to cover up the um, kitchen scraps. Now other materials that you can put in, let's get back to the very basic thing. This, it's not advisable. In fact, don't do it. Don't add any materials from an animal that eats meat. So like dog muck or cat muck. But you can add the waste materials from your hamster or your gerbil, even your parrot, I guess, if he's on sawdust rather than grit, which is found in the bottom of the parrot cage. Um, but you can't add ingredients to your compost from any animal source that is whose diet contains meat of any any um, mix it's just a no-no compost is plant-based either as a fresh green material or as a brown that started off life if you like as a tree and became a cardboard box that's untreated. So that's the best way of looking at it. Now, some people might think to themselves, he's putting straw or hay into the compost that is um, full of grass seeds. It's a, it's a minimal quantity. There may be some in there, but pet straw could have some. Not huge quantities. It's in the scheme of things, it's not a big enough concern to be worrying about. So you've got your mix of browns, you've got your mix of greens. The trick is 
is as this rots down, we want to be continually adding to it. So depending on the scale that you're making this, depends on the quantity of materials that are available. Now you saw me put coffee grinds in there. You could, you could, um, the dog's barking because there's a postman. I better make sure it's not for me, hadn't I? It probably isn't, but let's go and check. I'll be back in a second. Well, it was the posty, but it wasn't for me. That's good. That means I've not got any bills to pay. Okay, so we've added our garden green waste from the vegetables um, patches that we've either been pruning or um, weeding. And we're adding the, brick, the brown materials where we've um, collected the hay from outside or um, the cardboard. And then other sources of the green materials, the coffee grinds, vegetable peelings, that kind of stuff. People say that you can't put citrus fruits into the compost. I don't know why they say that. Are they thinking that it might increase the acidity because it's a lemon's quite acidic? I don't know. Do you know what? There's so many <laughs> myths, fantasies. I don't know what the thing is, but you can throw it on. It doesn't matter. If it's plant-based, chuck it in there because it will rot down and you get compost. It doesn't have to be confusing. You, it's only as confusing as people want to make it. There it is. That's on there. Now, it's not a good drink. What's the next thing to do? Well, I want to keep the moisture in there. And so what I do is I've got some polystyrene sheets. I just have to move my bits and pieces out of the way. So we'll just get our polystyrene over. And I want to keep the heat in here. And I want to keep the moisture in. So this is a great way of doing it. Now, what heat do we want? Well, as I say, the regular viewers of my obsessive compost making will know that I've got this compost thermometer. And I'm looking to get a temperature in Fahrenheit of between 130 and 160 degrees Fahrenheit, which is around about 65 degrees Celsius. And if I can achieve that um, over a period of time, and the last time I did this, which is when I spoke about how I turn my compost and how often, which is only once, um, it stayed at that temperature for a good 10 days. So any seeds that were in there will be killed off. So I'm, that's what I'm aiming, aiming for. So um, I'll stop this on here. I've got another piece to put in there, which I'll do in a second. So there we are. We've got an idea now of what we can get into our compost heaps. Make some good quality compost. It is very warm, but that is there. And that will stay like that. And as it rots down, I'll just keep adding more to it until the time comes when it's ready for me to, to turn. Well, <laughs> I've come to the ruin because, yeah, well, it's um, pretty warm out there today. Um, it's 10 o'clock local time here, but we're expected temperatures to be between 36 and 38 degrees Celsius today and tomorrow. So um, you, can't, you don't want to be spending too long outside there. So basically, that's really all you need to think about with regards to what you put into the compost. So if you have it in your mind that you're thinking about things to be um, plant based, either they started their life as a plant or the animals waste that you're using has only ever eaten plant based stuff. Um, so you're not looking at dog or cat manures, but you can look at things like sheep manure horse manure, that kind of thing. In the case of those manures of horse and sheep, we need to be looking at the idea of additional chemicals that were in 
the feed that the animal ate in the first place because if they've been eating hay i mean the hay that you've seen me use this morning has never been sprayed um, it's 100 percent organic but if that had been um, sprayed with something like grazon for example um, the product itself is used to stop the growth of broadleaf plants so we're talking things like docks that kind of stuff because obviously they want a better quality hay and they don't want those weeds in their in their um product their final product the issue with that is when the animal eats that hay it passes the chemicals called amino pyrrolids 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 you know what i mean or maybe you don't amino pyrrolids and they again stay in the compost and so when you come to plant beans for example they just don't grow because it's a broadleaf plant and it was designed and that chemical was designed to kill them off so if you're going to be using manures of any description you need to make sure that those manures have never had or come into contact with products like grazing so you've got your manures and that kind of thing and manures are a good source of nitrogen as well um, along with your grass cuttings hedge cuttings, the green materials, that's where your nitrogen source is coming from. And the nitrogen helps to generate the heat in the pile, which helps feed the bacteria, breaks everything down. And then over a period of time, you just keep topping it up. The brown materials, as we've said, is cardboard, um, but not shiny cardboard. And definitely, definitely don't use containers, food containers that people have said are compostable because yes they're compostable but they are laced with really bad chemicals and it's just not a great thing to be doing so governments out there and like i've asked you if you're in a particular country watching this and you're being um asked to to use these products let me know which country it is i'm, I'm curious because all i've seen so far is the uk because that's my own experience i'm intrigued to know if it's happening in america or european countries as well so um yeah let me know i'll be i'll be very happy if you did Okay, now I've got a trailer load full of um, hay that I've chopped up that you saw at the beginning of the video and I've got another job for that. So I'm going to go and wash my hands first of all this coffee grounds that I've got all over me and probably in my face as well. And then you never know, Rada here might help me move that trailer load of grass cuttings or hay cuttings for a different job. In the meantime, I hope you found this video of interest and I'll catch up with you very soon.